We're talk okay, in this unit we're teaching our students about entertainment. One of the key things we're talking about is the role of these people that we call producers, as a generic term, um, which we're using to describe everybody across the different industry sectors who balances creativity and business in the producing of entertainment. What does he actually do? Um, my job really is supposed to be a runner for the ship. So on a daily basis, yeah, decisions are never black and white. They're, they're, there's always grey. There's always, you know, six of one, half a dozen other, and and you just it's to sort of keep the company even keeled and consistent on message and focused on on what the overall objectives are, and also being someone who's got access to all the information. So if somebody comes and says we need a shitload more gear to be able to produce something really cool on stage. Um, if it was up to them, they'd just say, let's just run out and buy it, the company go bust, and that'll be it. Um, and if it's, it's up to an accountant, then we'd never buy anything, and we'd be boring, it would be like the traditional orchestra. So there's, decisions are normally difficult like that, and the same thing happens creatively. What, where is too far to go? Where is not far enough to go creatively? Um, and then, uh, you know, keeping us in tune with the whole purpose, which is the audience. Um, my title, if you want to touch on that, is the Program Director, but uh, my role is the um, to oversee, drive and push through DMG's digital radio strategy for the group across the country. Um, I guess what you were talking about largely is that ultimate knife edge of art versus commerce and what um, I guess personally lean to is about the creation of uh, great content and great programming but as I said if you uh, keep doing whatever the hell you want to do you go broke so uh, as a program director I've got to I guess make everything that I do and create commercially viable. Aaron, when you've been talking about Deep Blue you've already mentioned a couple of times that what made Deep Blue distinctive is that it starts from the audience and uh, you've asked the audience or you've asked them what they want and you've built the orchestra around that so I already know that for you understanding the audience is vital to what you do. How important is it to you to understand your audience? Oh, a billion percent. There's no point doing anything if you're not actually catering for the audience. If you're building shows, whether it's for TV or radio, for the producers of the show, then you're wasting your time. That's all about audience. But also remember too, there are a number of different audiences as well. There's consumer audience, there's commercial audience as well, your commercial partners. So there are, there are a number of people you need to satisfy, but predominantly in the commercial world, if you, um, you've got to build content, that's targeted for them and just super serve them all the time and you can never over serve them. Well, again, it's all about what you want. To, you need to know what you want to understand before you put it together, then you um, spend the time to pull it back out. Another component we do will be research to understand the audience and what really works, particularly for a youth brand like Nova. Um, that changes quite frequently and, and regularly, so it's important to know What's, uh, what's going on in the lives of, say, an 18 to 24-year-old who's the target audience, what concerts do they go to, what sort of um, fashion brands do they enjoy. So we learn a lot more of it rather than just specifically music. We also learn about lifestyle. Do you do anything like that as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. Um, I'm a big believer that unless you can really be specific on your targets um, and, and known them well, you're really you're aiming at nothing. way of converting that is, I mean, we're very specific at looking always at who the audience is and not just about who we want it to be. So right now, we describe our audience as the Joneses and it's a family um, and they're kind of um, a middle income bracket. Uh, it's not one and a half incomes, not including what the kids are doing to buy iPods and things with. Um, there's at least two kids um, and they're teenagers. If you set out to create a show or a, a feature or whatever you're doing, you need to know who you're going to talk to first before you even start storyboarding or anything because if you don't know who they are and what they're about, then you're probably not going to hit the mark. So it's about building that profile in your head. And then there's another mechanism you can do um, where it's a lot larger uh, research study where you'll test up to 500 songs in one night with um, your target audience. Um, that's obviously costly and doesn't happen quite as often and there are, it depends on what you want to find out but the most common one is regular research. And the, when you say the, the larger scale thing where you do 500 songs, yep. um, how is that managed? Is that online as well? No, you generally will do that in a, in a it's called an auditorium music test so you'll get a, a bunch of people, you screen um, a, a bunch of people to come in, they spend the night, you feed them, you pay them uh, it's something that you can't expect someone to sit down for three or four hours and churn through 500 songs. And you play them 500 song hooks and then they just tick a box or they might have um, more recently they'll do um, a little 
knob that they get to twist, so a bit like the worm that you may have seen on sometimes on TV, and um, we can get a gauge about how the song um, rates, and you can actually get real-time information about when they're listening to the song, you'll see it go up and down. And um, That's usually applied, though, if you're building something fresh from scratch, and it's usually applied to songs that are more familiar, like, for example, if you're doing a, a gold format station, like, I don't know, say, Triple M or... The actual rollout of Deep Blueness marketing strategy and everything is very much community based as well. So we involve schools, community groups, local councils. So when we hit towns we try and sort of cover everything like wallpaper, not just sort of show up, do a gig and leave. Um, so months and months out we're polling audiences about material they like. We, you know, like these guys, we actually survey during the show as well. We don't have little worm knobs but we've got mobile phones. So all throughout the show, constantly we're saying, communicate with the guys on stage. So just through computer monitors and stuff that are on stage, um, our SMSs, like what you guys are doing here, um, go straight to the performers. But there's lots of sort of, for us, valuable content in there. So we ask them before we create, once we've started putting stuff together, we ask them whether, how they like it. Um, then, we, then we start doing comparisons between stuff that they've seen before and um, what we're adding is new, just as our way of sort of benchmarking would you rather hear the old stuff or the new stuff? Out of all the years I've looked after bands, the number one question is how do you think we're going so far? Like, do they like us? I can't see for the lights. So we've said, well, get out there and talk to them midway through the show, get a better handle of who the audience is. I mean, I'll often text messages to them by saying, you know, shit, do you guys ever smile? I don't think it discounts your intuition. I don't think you do research and that's that's just one tool that you have. And we also do the one-on-one the -on -one small groups as well, um, where we just get 10 people in and we just have a chat to them. I don't think anything's worth more or less. I think it just gives you a palette of information and then you use your intu intu sorry, intuition to interpret it and to apply that. And to, over time and experience, you'll learn the best ways to, to get a read on it. So sometimes it's big and expensive, sometimes it's lo-fi, and you, sometimes you get the best gems from the small things. It's just your intuition is the skill you have of taking that information on board and translating it into whatever your product is.